Hello YouTube, my name is Sean Connors and welcome back to The Outsiders and this week we're going to be talking all about Let's Build an RPG and this week focuses on the secondary skills. Um, well, the reason we're able to start here is of course because we don't have any uh, classes this is where we can move to now. Normally we'd at this step cover off those but that's not necessarily with this build so we can focus on these. Now I'm going to cover off in a minute the formula that I'm going to use this week. I've mapped out about 20 of them but what I've done is unimportant. It's what you do with the formula and the secondary skills that you choose that will count. And obviously we have to be thinking ahead that sec these are secondary skills, not skills that will fit probably into the path and there will be a distinctive difference. Naturally this formula will be just as relevant for the skills in the paths probably except for magic which works slightly different on most occasions when we talk about magical runes and things but the theory is pretty much the same. There may be a little bit of time left at the end of the video, and if there is, we may be able to cover off a couple of little loose ends at that point. So, without further ado, uh, now that we've uh, got to this point, let's let's discuss um, the stats bonuses that we haven't really talked about up until now. Now, if somebody has an 18 in a stat, that's going to be worth plus 3. 18 or more, I should say, plus 3. If they have... 17 or 16, that's plus 2. If they have 15, 14 or 13, that's plus 1. If you have 12, 11 or 10, that's no bonus. If you have 9, 8, 7, that's minus 1. If you have 6, 5, 4, it's minus 2. And if you have a 3, it's minus 3. Fairly straightforward, nothing particularly revolutionary there. But it's important to know as we're about to go into the step about skills. I'm going to take one skill at random and I'm going to choose riding. I think that's probably the most apt skill to use in this particular case. And um, I've also decided that all skills will be at least affected by two stats or more. Uh, again, your decisions here will count. So for writing, I've chosen, um, I've decided that manip strength and manipulation are the two stats that affect it. And let's take a scenario where somebody had a 13 strength and a 9 uh, manipulation. Now, if we think about the bonuses I've just given, that would mean plus 1 for the strength and mi uh, minus 1 because of the manipulation. Does that mean it just balances out and there's nothing? No, that would be pretty boring, wouldn't it? What I need to add here before I tell you about this little, little kink is the fact that all the skills will be out of a rank of 12. This will make more sense when you understand that I'm having target numbers and I'm only using a d6 for the entire system here. There is no need to use any other dice. This is a really nice twist on this game. Literally one d6 can achieve so much for us. It's Everybody's got one. It makes sense to do it. And I actually think when you see the mechanics unfold, it's it's going to be like this is a really interesting thing to do. Um, it gets away from a lot of the last uh, sort of 12 years. We've used a lot of D20s over the years, and a lot of mechanics have bent that way, and I want to try and avoid that if I can. But I don't want to just do it for the sake of it. I need something that's going to really hold its own. So bear with me. That thought might think, ooh, that might be a cringing moment, but just bear with us. See what you make of this. So now that we know that it's out of 12 ranks, and we take our scenario that we've just given, we know that this particular character had plus one for his strength and minus one for his manipulation. We know that the skills are out of 12 ranks. What we can do now is fairly easy this. Because he's got plus one, that means he gets one free rank to start with. Nice and simple, because he's got plus he's got a plus one because of his 13 strength. But manipulation is minus one, so we take one off the end. So the maximum he can develop this character to is eleven ranks. Now what makes this really sensible is of course when the GM assigns a target number to it, um, he ha rolls a d6. And of course, there's a little chart. Um, I won't necessarily show you the chart because I don't think it's going to make an awful lot of sense at this stage. But I'll, I'll give you a, I'll give you a vague idea of how they would look. I mean, it's a very, very simple little chart like this that would just run down with target numbers down both sides. And if I take that as an example for that skill, let's say that he's got six ranks in this, and the target number's two, then he needs to score three or more for it to be a success. So very nice and simple, um, and a very nice, easy mechanic to actually run. Um, because the dice is, an ex we call it an exploding dice, this isn't a mechanic that they used in Dragon Age, it makes sense to bring that in here. So even if somebody's really not very good at something, they could always get lucky, really, in some way. And if they roll a six, they get to roll the dice again until they don't roll any more sixes. So it just really makes sense. And you'll notice at all times now that this mechanic will start to make its way into the system. So I'm going to quickly recap. So what we've done here is we've 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 decided that the skills are out of 12. We will assign at least two or more stats to them. We know that um, we know how it works in terms of if, if a stat has a bonus, then you get a certain amount of free ranks to start with. And if it has a negative, it takes it off the end. So that's nice and simple. The final thing you'd have to decide once you've done this, of course, and you've also chosen some stats for it, is to decide the cost. 
Now, I've chosen uh, riding, and I've decided that riding will be worth 200 XP for every rank that you have to or want to buy. So if the person only had that character scenario, um, the next question is, how many ranks can they buy as a beginning character? Because that was a question that came up a few times. That's fairly easy to answer. Um, in this case, because there are two stats affecting that particular skill, uh, you take the best stat, which in this case is 13 because of strength. You divide it by 2 because that's how many stats are involved and round down in all cases with this, this RPG. And that would make 6.5 or 6. So you can buy a maximum of 6 ranks to start with. Nice and neat and uh, very easy to do. So um, obviously if you decided to, on the scenario I've just given, you could buy 5 more ranks plus the one you already got as a freebie to make it 6. And those 5 ranks would cost you 1,000 XP. So you can quickly see how you can go through your experience points here and would have to balance it out a little bit more. So I hope that makes sense, and that's the formula for skills. I think it's quite clever. It gets away from some of the uh, nuances that some of the bigger games bring in. You know, if you've got a really bad character, you just suck at everything. This sort of does it in a really unique way because it's the end point that it stops you getting to. And I'm not saying there might not be rules that we can write around that as well to make it possible to go into those skill, those those areas where you would normally struggle. Maybe you have to pay double or, or more, depending on, on what is decided. But that's something we can talk about later. So I hope you like it. So I'm offering that out to you tonight as the formula for skills. I look forward to what you come up with. And um, leaves me uh, a couple of opportunities at the end of this video just to cover off a couple of loose ends. Um, the first one is going to be that um, the... Um, um, where are we? Uh, I lost my train of thought there. That's most unusual. Um, Yes, of course, it came back to me. I do apologise, most unprofessional, as it was going so well in the video. I think we'll leave this in. Um, magic. What It is attunement, isn't it? Yes, that's quite right. It is based on attunement. And like we have health as a secondary stat, attunement um, is going to be based off its own score. So whatever your attunement score is going to be your is going to be your magic score. That's how many magic points you have. Now that tells you something straight away about this type of game. It tells you that um, magic is going to be limited but very powerful. Um, it's going to come back quite slowly, possibly, depending on the type of character and sort of things that you do. Um, and the balancing factor that I've brought into the game is that elves are naturally more attuned, um, just by nature, to the various elements, to the various way that magic works, and so get their magic back quicker. The negative to elves is that they heal twice as slow. So that's a nice, simple mechanic. Um, the way that, and I'll go into this later in more detail, but it was a question that was asked. And the way that healing will work in this game is humans heal at the normal rate, and we'll talk about this later. We're not going to cover this at this point in the game. Um, dwarves and halflings are more sturdy, more interesting. They heal at half the rate, and elves heal at double the rate, so it takes them twice as long. And I think that's a lovely balancing factor. Um, really quite ingenious, and I'm happy with that. So I share those little final pieces with you. Now, some of those little end bits won't make a lot of sense at this point but just let them sit there because it will all come good at the end a final thing i think i better cover off because we're talking really about skills tonight we're going to be moving into paths um in just a moment we're going to talk a little bit about the paths but another thing about the skills you can also think about is that if a skill might have a synergy with one of the paths so an example might be acting could be a secondary skill and that could have points off say you think of words like mingle or disguise later Think about it in terms of points off the amount of the cost, so like 50 points off. That's going to be quite clever moving into the other phases of the paths. So I leave that with you as well, a little thought to think over. And finally, a final point for this week is this. What path would you like to see next as well? And we will cover that off with a majority of votes from YouTube, not from the playtesters. And next week's video will start with a feedback and comments one based on a lot of the stuff that you guys have done over the last couple of weeks, which we've not covered off. And then we'll move into that video on the path that you've decided. Anyway, I've been Sean Connors. This has been all about Let's Build an RPG. Thanks for your comment. Thanks for your keep feedback. Keep those thumbs up coming in because it does make a difference and really helps guide the playtesters. So thank you for those and the emails that I've received. All the best to you. Happy gaming and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.